Now we're ready to begin assigning roles to users and we're currently at video 10. If you missed any of the prior videos, you could always find that at the top right corner, it should pop out right now. If you click on that, you get the entire playlist of what we did so far. And to apply roles, the way we're gonna do this is if we go back to the application, we're gonna create admin roles and we're gonna create manager roles. So this public page here, anyone can view this page, admins and managers. And then the manager page, only managers can view this. The admin page, only admins can view this. The way we're gonna assign the roles is through the register page. Now normally you would not let the user pick their own roles, but just to keep it simple, I added the dropdown within the register form page. So to make this happen, if we go back to our checklist, first we'll go inside of the startup class, we'll make sure we have that configured correctly. Now we already did this in video one. If you missed that, you definitely wanna go back and check it out, but we'll just double check it just in case anyone's just joining us. We'll go back in the startup class and make sure that's configured. Then we'll jump into our identity controller and we'll start working in there. Open up the API folder and we'll check out the startup class. Just double check, make sure we're adding something here and then the identity controller. I'll go ahead and open this up. So inside the startup class, you, you wanna double check to make sure that you're adding identity to your startup class. And we did this in video one. And again, that playlist is up here in the top right corner. So after you double check your startup class, we're ready to move into the identity controller. And the first thing we want to do here is within the identity controller constructor method, we'll set up our role manager. We'll bring that in. And I'll put all of these on their own line and add it towards the bottom. And we'll set up the private field for the role manager and add this at the beginning. So whenever we want access to our role manager, we'll just call on this. And then within the login method, or actually the register method, we'll start in here. So normally we would not create the roles within here. Like we might do that within a admin section or something like that. But just to keep the video simple, I'm gonna add it right here. And what I'm doing here is I'm checking to see if the role already exists in our database. And we'll be checking that table out pretty soon and I'm checking whatever we're getting from the model, and we'll set that up in a second. Now, if it doesn't exist, go ahead and create it within our database. Now, you could always seed your database with a bunch of roles, like when you fire up your application. That is another way of doing it. But again, just to keep it simple, I did it this way. Now, let's take care of this role error. We'll open up the register model, go to definition, and we'll add in a role property. And this field is going to be required and we can save this we won't be back in here and i'll shut this down now that we created our role now what we want to do is get the user from the database if we succeeded at creating a user so within this if statement right here we'll go and grab the user from the database and i called it user from db and we're using our user manager that we're already bringing in and we're getting the user by its username Next, we want to apply that role to the user. And again, we're using the user manager and there's a method called add to role async, pass in the user from the database and the role that's being passed in through our model. And that's all we want to do within the register method. Now we're going to want to go into the login method and make some changes in there in a second. But let's save this and test this out in Postman before we go any farther. So back at our register API, now what we'll do is we'll pass in a role with our other information here. So we'll pass in an email, a custom email. I'll call this test4. We haven't created that yet. And we need to make sure we have a unique username. So Mike4, I'll keep the same password, but now we'll be adding a role. And my new role for this account will be manager. So if we hit send, we should be able to create a new account. And we got back a status OK, and we succeeded at creating a new account. Let's open up the database and see if we have a manager role in our database. Let's jump into our database. So open database, and we'll open up our main app.db. Then go into the Explorer. So we should have a manager roles within our database. So right click on ASP.NET roles, show table. 
and I'll drag this over so we can see it better. And now we have a manager role within our ASP.NET roles table. Also, we assign this manager role to our user, our new user. If we go into ASP.NET user roles, right click on that show table, and we assign this user role or this role to the user. Now, a good thing to know, you could sign multiple roles to an individual user. So you might have multiple user IDs within this table. Now that we're able to assign roles, let's add our new role within the token when the user logs in. So what I'll do is I'll close this down, open up the login API. And what we wanna do is we wanna include the role into the generate token method when the user tries to log in. So right above the return OK, we'll get all the roles for this user by using the user manager and we'll use the method called get roles async and pass in the user from the DB. And that should get all the roles that belong to that user. And then we'll take that and pass that into this method. Now we're going to get an error for this. And the reason is, is this method here is not expecting the roles right now. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So we'll refactor that and I'll close this down and then we'll go inside of our core services token and open up the interface and also the service. We'll start inside of the interface. And the only thing we want to do here is add in within our generate token, the roles. And I'll add that on towards the end here. And we'll add in as a I list of strings and I called it roles. So we want to do that within our token generator. So I'll save this. Let's jump over here. And we'll add that within our generate token as well, the roles. And then we'll add our roles onto the claims. So we're going to do something very similar to what we're doing here, but we're going to be doing it for the roles. So I'll add that snippet here. And here, what we're going to do is loop through each of our roles and we'll apply it to our claims. So now within our JOT tokens, we'll have each of our roles. And that's the only configuration we want to do in our token generator. Now we'll be coming back and revisiting this again when we set up claims. But for now, that's all we need to do in here and in here. And if we go back inside of our login API, our error should be gone now. Now before we go any farther, let's test this in Postman one more time. So I'll make sure I save all of my files and let's open up Postman again. Let's open up our login API and then we'll try to log in with the new account and that is Mike4. And then let's log in. So now this token should have our manager role included inside of it. So if we copy this and there's a way we could test this if we go back to the browser and if you go to this website, jolt.io, and then paste it in here and we should have our role in here now. So here is our given name and we set up our claims for that and the email. And now you'll notice here we have a role called manager. So we're able to create a role. We're able to apply it to our user's token. Now let's protect a route by its role. So let's find a route to protect. So open up the user controller. And then if you're not a manager, we won't let you use this API right here. So right below here, I'll add in the authorized attribute. And then here we're doing something a little different. We're adding in the roles. And if you have a role of manager, then you'll be allowed to use this API. So let's pull in the authorize. And then let's go ahead while we're here, we'll add another authorized attribute to this one. And this one, you're going to need to be the admin. And I'll make sure I replace this right here. So if you're the administrator, or if you have a role of administrator, you'll be allowed to use this API. And this API, anyone could use this one. So one more time, we'll jump back into Postman. We'll test our manager API. Let's open up our protected API, and that's user managers. So now you need a role of manager to use this API. And then we'll log in. We'll get a fresh token with the username Mike4. So this has a role of manager. Copy this. Make sure you get all the letters in there. 
and then go into this API and that's inside the headers. Make sure you leave the space in there, very important. And this should let us in. We should get a 200, okay, so that's great. Now let's try to sign in with a user that does not have the role of manager. So I'll replace the four. We already have an account called Mike, but this does not have the correct role. So if we copy this, jump back over here, and this should give us a 403 forbidden, and that's exactly what we're looking for. Then if we try to put some gibberish in here, like remove this, hit send, we get a 401 unauthorized, exactly what we're looking for. Now that we set up a way to add roles to the users, let's set up a way to add claims to the users in the next video. And then we'll be setting up the register form or the front end. We'll be doing that in a later video after we get done adding roles, claims, and policies to our users. So video 11, let's add claims to our users and we'll do that next.